Hi guys, welcome to Megan the Moon. I hope you all are doing well. Um, so today's video is going to be kind of a flip through of my a journal I just made for myself, but also just kind of like a story time and a talk about how I am curating this journal and why. And I'm hoping that sharing this will maybe inspire how you put your journals together or maybe how you use your journal. Um, I know a lot of you guys use your journals in different ways for like memory keeping, junk journaling, art journaling, all different. But I feel like this is really um, across the board. Like it doesn't matter what kind of journaling you do, the way that I am doing this journal and putting this how I put this journal together I think you know it, it could um resonate with anybody so before we get started um I do want to say because I think it's really important to be transparent about things is that this journal is inspired by journal a journal that I saw that was made using Amity Bloom's artist in bloom class so it's not exactly i did not take her class i have not taken her class but the actual like some of the construction elements were inspired by her the a journal that i saw that was made in her class although i have no idea how that journal was constructed or made um really because i did not take the class it's completely different obviously um but i did really like um the element that i saw of having like a little journal on top of the journal and so I took that I think in her class her the journal that she makes also has um another like pop out on the bottom but I decided to forego that and I will explain why so I just wanted to be transparent about that so even though I kind of made up this instruction on my own that style um I saw from her but I decided not to uh, take her class right now for a couple reasons the first reason being that I Last year when I started art journaling, bought so many classes and just kind of jumped right into all of that stuff. And a lot of those classes I have not yet completed. So I'm trying to kind of like rein it in and like go through and finish the classes that I've already done so that I'm not just pouring more money into classes. I was just going to kind of sit by the wayside and be transparent about that. I think that's really important um, to mention where you saw something um, and just give credit. You know, even if that person is well loved and has a lot of followers. Anyway, so this is my birthday journal. My birthday is next week, August 3rd. And I've really been enjoying working in a journal that doesn't have as many pages because I love making journals. And I was getting really overwhelmed working in these big chunky journals that then become really hard to work in. And I love the idea of completing a journal like within a month or two months. So I got this idea when I saw that journal um, to make one in a similar construction with all of my favorite things and make it my birthday journal. My birthday month journal, I'm really like, this is going to be an art journal. That's like my main way of kind of working i'm not gonna write in here it's gonna be all art spreads um i haven't decided what a theme is but that's kind of where what we're going to talk about in this video so off the bat i use my favorite fabrics i use my favorite types of imagery um and i'll kind of show you the construction so i use this black and white dalmatian print fabric that i've used on a lot of things i put one of my journaling cards my eye stamp we have circe here and I have my little Yoda quote, do or do not, there is no try. And so I attach that here on this front cover. This um, neon yellow fabric is a fabric that I dye. It's my favorite color. It's like a chartreuse. Um, it's my favorite. Um, this is my favorite fabric. And I buy this dye in bulk. Uh, to make this color and I will show you which one it is I use this dye I use this dye in every color they're dye packets I dye for natural fabrics they have uh, for synthetic fabrics as well 
Um, it's Jacquard, so it's a really great brand. These are a little bit pricier than Rit. They're like maybe $4, sometimes $5, depending where you're at. But when I tell you they're in a little plastic packet that can dye, like, I want to say at least five. This says three pounds of clothes, but when I was selling vintage clothing regularly, I was make this is a long time ago, but I was making those like tie-dye studded shorts. I would just dye like... <laughs> six pairs of shorts with one packet of, of this dye. So add a little salt to this. And I mean, you're not, it probably won't be washing your journal, but you know, if you want to keep it light fast, um, I highly recommend eye dye. It's just, I don't really, this is the only dye that I use besides, um, besides eco dyeing. So <laughs> with that being said, I have this piece of doily here that I actually dyed with distress ink pads. So that's something um, if maybe you know how to do, but I can show you how to do on a, like a, a short video, but this is dyed with distress ink pads. I use my favorite hot pink thread. I use my favorite, um, uh, new fabric that's from Joann's. Um, I actually saw Gypsy Bow's Paper Magic using this fabric and she sent me some tags with this fabric and I loved it so much I bought some. <laughs> so I used that. And then, so this construction that I said I made up, it's not perfect and I definitely had to tweak it a little bit, but um, it's basically like a little tiny book on top of my actual journal. I put some netting and some ledger and then I made this, that, this huge sketchbook paper that I use, um, 18 by 24 Strathmore drawing paper. I just put black gesso and white marks and I just like basically cut it and made these the pages. Um, I didn't bind it traditionally. I just put it through my sewing machine. And I'm going to use this for just some little collages. And then this is another piece of dyed ledger that I made in another video. And I attached that. And then this is one of my own pieces of watercolor splatter paper I make. And then I attach some scrapbooking paper with grid to the back. And then this is actually the front cover of the book. And I put in... A little belly band here because I'll probably make a really big like collage card and stick it in there. This is actually a piece of um, when I make the closures for my big um, fatty thickums journals. <laughs> this is a piece of one of the closures that I made. So um, I had a little bit left and I just put it there and I sewed, I glued it on and then sewed the edges. Okay, I'm just giving you a quick flip through of this journal. Basically, I use all my favorite things. I use papers I'd been hoarding, um, little like even this watercolor thing I paper I did a long time ago. Anything that I was hoarding that I thought was precious or I was feeling was precious to me, I put it in here because this is really about getting into the habit of using the stuff that you're hoarding, using your good stuff, because you deserve to use your good stuff on your stuff. Like, you know, when you're holding on to like the perfect image for the perfect spread, this is the perfect place to put it. Wherever it is that you're going to see it, where it's, that's where it lives and you're going to have access to it, right? You can't mess it up. With that being said, a little piece of advice that I have to give, if you feel like an image, like you, you are afraid to use it and lose it, scan it in, scan it in, save it, and then, you know, print it at another time. You don't need a scanner to um, scan in images. You can use the free app Scannable, and I've used that to do a lot of really beautiful high-resolution scans of my artwork, actually, and they print beautifully. Um, this is... I'll show you an example. This is the original piece of my journal that I use the Scannable app for. It's got, um, that's crackle paint. It was an accident how I did this actually. I used, I thought I was using crackle paste and I put on texture paste. And then I was like, oh damn. So then I put on <laughs> crackle paste on top of the texture paste. And I went to bed and when I woke up, it was cracked this much. So I filled in the edges with glitter glue, chunky, chunky glitter glue in there. And then I coated the entire thing with like three coats of super heavy gel matte medium. And it was in a journal and it didn't break. It hasn't broken. And I just recently took it out of the journal because this is like one of my favorite things I've ever made. And it was like in a random like challenge journal. And I, I just put it in this frame today that I had found at the thrift store. 
but this is the original and that's the scan on the scannable app that i actually use on my business cards and i even made a uh, postcard prints of that so scannable is a great app if you want to preserve an image or a piece of painted paper or something that you're like oh i want to be able to have it again um so anyway this is all of about using my favorite things and putting them in this special journal so I love sequins, so I made myself a sequin pocket um, right at the top with some of this mesh. They have this mesh at the Dollar Tree, but I've also ordered some um, off Shein before. Like, this stuff is fairly cheap in a big roll. This is a watercolor paper. I'm not going to go through every page. I'm just going to kind of show you. I love working on craft paper. And so I added some uh, old French book paper. This is a paper bag. I love working on grid paper. I love ledger. The, with ledgers, I know we tend to hoard ledger paper, but use it. Like, use it and enjoy it. Um, this is old envelopes. I love envelopes. This is from um, Peacekeeper Paper. If you don't follow her, she makes beautiful paper. She doesn't have that many sales, but she makes beautiful paper. This is like a rust paper. This is a red rosin paper that had some paint on it. You know, I basically use scraps in here. So that's the first signature, very short, so very manageable. And then the second signature is another piece of splatter sketchbook paper, a little uh, security envelope pocket, because I love those, more ledger, some splattered um, under paper, scrap paper, rust paper and more under paper and that's basically the gist of this journal okay so very simple all of the papers I like to work on no embellishments yet um, and then I'm going to show you kind of what I have curated to, to, to put in here. So instead of doing like a capsule collection, which I know like February and June does, but I, I, I kind of go through my stuff and I put together like stuff that I really like for now or that. And that kind of sets the theme for the journal. Once you like, if you do that and like put it all aside and go back like a few days later, or a couple weeks later, you're going to see that you have kind of probably set up a theme without realizing it. Um, so for this, I have some La Green Witch, some of her beautiful, uh, fake Polaroids that are like religious themed. Um, I really love, you know, these types of statues and, and all of the imagery that comes with that. I have these metallic silver doily, a tiny envelope. These are little pieces of painted paper. I think this is... I don't know what this was. I feel like it's a store, something I got in the mail that I cut it out, but I'm just gonna cover the name because I just love the flowers. More of my painted paper, a glassine envelope. Loved this image. This is a little paper bag I got some stickers in and I was just collecting little images, a cluster, um, some little pictures I really wanna use. This is like something that I had left over from the 100 day project that I didn't use. This is one of my stamps on one of these doilies. Another little cluster stapled painted paper. This is um, a handmade lopta paper, if I'm saying that right. Um, and I just cut out two eyes from it. This is left over from my Patreon that I was doing where I made my Oracle cards. These are the backs. Um, I just like this. This is one another stamp I carved. Then I have this little pocket, you know, if I choose to use that. It has the little stars. Um, water. This is like an end cut painted paper. This is handmade paper that I made with my sister at like the beginning of COVID. We did one day of like handmade paper um, with confetti, like the ripped up shreds from Dollar Tree and lots of glitter. And I have like a few pieces. So I put out, took out a piece of that because I don't have a lot of this and making paper is a lot. And I just like, it's not something I can do right now. And so this stuff is precious to me, but I wanted to use a piece of it because of that. More of this, some more of my stars, some ledger. One of these pages, it looks like a portal some pictures of like owls. I don't know. I just really liked these owl pictures. And this is Jeannie Mae June. 
Jen, a Jamie June, sent me a beautiful happy mail with this paper in it. I'm in love with it. And she also sent me this beautiful gold star fabric that I've already pulled out to use. Um, this was, I was stamping some images for my Art Witch kit and I use my jelly plate because it holds the paint, keeps the paint wet for longer. And then when I was done, I just pulled um, the image off and my stamps, all the stamps I was using, like you can kind of see them on this paper bag. It's one of my cards. Here's one of my little envelopes I used for my Art Witch kits. I just kept one. And I have just like a collection. I'm obsessed with tornadoes. So I have some tornado images. Some random paper and paper from a book. This is some images from a book about dreams. Angels. So I don't really like feel like I need to use every single one of these images. A lot of these things I've been hoarding like this angel and this prayer card and these these images. You know, I'm obsessed with doors, windows, angels, grid paper. <laughs> I have some braille paper, some vintage lined paper. I don't know where I got this, but I'm obsessed with it. I don't know where it comes from. So, right, when you have a piece of scrapbooking paper that you don't know where it comes from, you probably will hoard it. It's Cupid. I've been hoarding that from a book, illustrator book. Space, you know, I love that. Um... Oh my God, these were also sent to me by Jen from Ginny May June and I love them. I'm obsessed with these moths. I love moths and it's an Atlas moth and I love this tree. It literally looks like the weirwood tree on my arm from Game of Thrones. So I love that. And then these are the envelopes I make for the Art Witch kits. Sometimes I keep, keep some, like if I make one, I really like it. I just keep it. Um, this one has this woman like swimming and it's just a scraps collage envelope and I would just, uh, stick that in here somewhere. I don't think it would fit here. It's too wide, but yeah, I might just stick it in there at the end or fill it with stuff or, you know, so that's some of the stuff that I curated for this journal. And so what I would normally do is when I sit down to start working in the journal, um, I will pull this envelope out and start going through it and see what inspires me. If nothing inspires me from this envelope that day, I might go pull from something else because I'm always going through magazines or going through my stash or getting stuff in the mail. So sometimes that will inspire me um, and then I'll remember, oh, I have a little element in here I like. I also pulled out, I like sewed one of these Amazon things, some like scrapbooking scraps and some, oh, this is also from Jen, <laughs> Jenny May June. Um, she sent her Patreon mail on this and I just took off the thing that said Wacky Pack because I'm going to put a big football image there. But I love this. It's like envelopes and I can put tags there and I'm going to put it in here somewhere. And I have like neon envelopes and die cut butterflies and painted papers and envelopes. Just a ton of random things. Whatever it was that I have that I felt like I really, really like this, I took it out. And I really learned one of the things, you know, I learned in the inner heroin class from Vanessa was that use your good stuff. And I'm so happy, like some of those pictures I'd had for a very long time and I... I didn't hesitate to put them in that book because that book was so special. But every book can be special. And I think that that's something that I realize, you know, every book can be special. So, you know, you can treat every journal like it's the most special journal and put your most special things in there, no matter what kind of journal it is. You know, when you get a journal and it's so clean and you don't want to use it. Um, it's really about getting out of that, that mindset, um, and just going in and starting. You're not going to mess anything up. You can't mess anything up. You can't because whatever you make is of you 
and it's going to be beautiful okay so i just wanted to share this book with you guys and share with you how i put like a little kit together for myself um i'll 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 definitely be sharing more of this as i start working in it on instagram but uh, i hope this inspires you to make yourself something really beautiful and really special even if you don't know what you're doing i didn't know what i was doing with this journal i will tell you the base of it it's card stock so i use two pieces of cards one piece of card stock for the front and the back the actual spine spine is no lining because i like to have it this spine be expandable and be very soft so there's no lining there at all no cardstock nothing two pieces of cardstock with fabric sewn on um and then stitched around and then these pieces this out outside book i made separately stitched together and glued on okay it's not um anything crazy you know i feel like you don't even need to stitch it you can make something like this you just wrap the cardstock the fabric around the cardstock you know and i did a regular three hole pamphlet stitch but if you do have a machine like if you're only using a few pages you could definitely just run through the machine and and have it and it works perfectly fine like the pages are great when you run them through the machine it works great and it looks cute if you use a cute color thread thank you so much guys i will be back i have a lot of really cool videos planned that i'm really excited about and thank you all for watching hello to my new subscribers and i will talk to you soon bye